Working with a team changed year on year, I guess. Um, when it starts out, you know, sort of 2014, 2015, those first years that I was doing, there was 18, 19 races. Um, I guess because you're sort of young and no commitments at home, it's brilliant. You know, I really enjoy the travel and I went to a lot of cities and places that I would have never been otherwise. I think, you know, what we class as the flyaways are much more interested than the Europeans just because you turn up a day earlier and you maybe stay a day later because of how the flights work out. Whereas the Europeans, you arrive Wednesday evening, maybe. Um, so you've got at most Wednesday, maybe Thursday night out in the city that you end up in. And then you leave on Sunday night. So the Europeans always felt really condensed and not a lot of time to see the city or much outside the track or, or the hotel. Whereas the flyaways, you'd sort of get in on a Tuesday. So you might have a bit of time, you know, during the day on Wednesday and you might not leave to Monday. So you'd like a big night out on Sunday night. Um, and especially for the flyaways as well, there was um, a lot of opportunity to stay out and do some holidays. So we go to Australia, if you'd the next week off, we'd stay out, I'd work from home there. So you do all your normal analysis, but it, it's very, ha you know, when the year starts for an F1 team, particularly now with the number of races, it, it's very tough, you know, you're working, you do the week before in prep for the race, you do the race, you do the week after in analysis. So if you've got a, a weekend that there's no race on, you maybe have a three or four day weekend with some blue days in there. But the other days you're working every single day, so you don't get a break. It's not like on Monday after the race, we have some downtime. You don't really, you're straight into your analysis. So it does become, you know, really tough, which is, I think, um, well known. The reason I left is... Um, the triple headers in particular I find very demanding and um, physically demanding with the time shifting and, you know, the pressure on the pit wall and, you know, we've got a lot of emotion going on. And um, so I did I did find it tough. And that was one of the reasons for stepping away from the sport. Um, I would have stayed if I could have missed a few races because you've done eight years traveling. You've, I've missed a lot of birthdays and a lot of weddings, but I've not missed a single session. I've not missed an FP1 for anything. Um, even because, you know, doctors travel with you from the team. So if you have a little niggle or a cold or whatever, someone's there to give you something to sort you out and like get you through the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, that's that's how the team needs to operate. I get it. Um, so yeah, the step away from it's been really, really interesting for so many reasons. So doing the broadcast side, a bit of F1 that I've not really thought about before. Yes, sure, I've watched it on TV, but I'm not thought about what goes into making that. Um, and when you're doing strategy on the pit wall, you're so focused on your two cars and the cars around it that you're racing, but you sometimes miss the bigger picture. So you could get to an end of a race, particularly in our midfield position, and not know who won. I know that sounds ridiculous, but you'd literally have to go and check who won the race. Um, whereas now watching it, you know, on TV, on the commentary box, you get to see the whole picture again. So you're getting to go back to that sort of watch it when you were younger, see the whole race, like see everything that's interesting that's going on without the, the pressures on it. And um, so definitely it's a lot, it's a lot better work-life balance. And um, I feel sometimes now when I arrive at the track on a Sunday, it's a bit like rocking up at school without your homework done. Because before you'd have done hours and hours of analysis and now I've done like some analysis, but not loads. So it would just feel a bit like, oh, you know, someone going to catch me out for not knowing the right answer here. Um, but yeah, it's much I'm enjoying, you know, I'm enjoying being back in the paddock and I'm enjoying, you know, the experience. Do, do you think um, that the season is now too long for the for the personnel that are working in it? Because we we. We were in, actually, Nadia was there as well in, in Austin last year. And I remember walking down the paddock, talking to various people from different teams. Um, and there was Mexico coming up and everyone was pretty knackered already. And, and people looked drawn out and tired. Is this, has it got a bit ridiculous with all these races? Do you think it's too much? For me personally, yeah, it was. It was too much. Um, I think the teams are trying to do a bit more rotation. So I know, you know, a lot of the teams, particularly for the mechanics, they get three or four races off and it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough to make a difference. It's enough to say, I've got this wedding I want to do or a little bit of a break through the year. Every year, even when there's 18 or 19, you do this cycle of, you know, January, February, you're at home, you just want to get back to the track, you're fed up in the winter in the UK, you want to get out of the house and get to summer sunny. So you always go through this like excitement at the start of the year and then it wears you down through the year and by the winter you're ready for the break again. But I think that has got more intense with the number of races that have been added. I think there's a big discussion to be had within F1. I think it's already started, but we have the cost cap, which restricts what teams spend. That includes what they spend on people. 
And some of that cost cap is restricting an absolute ability to rotate people more, particularly the engineering functions. So there's something, you know, you got to be careful because teams will totally, you know, um, take liberties with it if there's too much freedom in the regulation and that, for sure. But there has, to, I think there has to be, so if we're going to continue to add races, there needs to be some sort of attitude to, to help that. Because at the moment, very few of the teams are rotating, particularly the engineers. Um, a lot of the mechanics are getting to a good point on that where they're missing a few, but it's still quite a lot of time away. So, so basically you're, it, the suggestion is that they either make certain travel elements or, or accommodation and things exempt from the budget cap so that you have a bit of flexibility there to rotate your, your team. Yeah, so like from, from my point of view when I was doing strategy, if, if I could have done half the races or two thirds of the races and had the other ones totally off not be in mission control in the factory, I would have stayed. I would still be doing strategy in F1. It's, I, I loved what I did. Um, but it gets to a point where you have to decide either your life's going to be fully committed to this and you're going to do the next 20 years at the track or you've got to like promote you know a bit of self-life somewhere. So if you could employ three people for two people's jobs and rotate them, without having, you know, effectively what teams will see as a wasted expenditure, that sort of system would allow you to continue to keep your people fresh and, you know, not necessarily have the intellect drain that maybe we have at the moment. Does that, um, does that sort of re- regulation change take an, a very long time? Because it, when you talk about it here and now, you sort of think, well, that makes perfect sense, just do it. Yeah. But the reality of it, is that something that's going to have to go through loads of red tape and bureaucracy before it ever happens? Yeah, I think so. I think it will have to. And I think, you know, like I said, teams teams will take liberties with it for sure. You know, every team's trying to get as much out of the cost cap as they can. So the FIA and teams will spend a lot of time debating with any of these regulations. What happens is someone suggests a regulation to all of us. It makes perfect sense. There's no reason why you wouldn't do it. Then one team starts to think, does that um, is that more positive for another team than it is for us? for whatever reason. So teams start to think about their own position within this world. Is it positive or negative for them? And then teams start to debate it and then teams start to worry about how other teams can use it to their advantage. So if you think of, you know, we've got 10 teams in the pillion. If you think of the Red Bulls, the Ferraris with big budget anyway, where actually they're not, they are limited by the cost cap. They can easily employ the extra people that we're talking about. But the likes of Haas and Williams maybe with less sponsorship money coming in, even if it wasn't for the cost cap, maybe that extra stretch and resources is stretched too far. 